This Ohio man is streaming while driving around a residential area. He admits several times that he drives fast and takes his eyes off of the road for seconds at a time to look at his phone and interact with viewers. Some of the people watching his stream ask the man to slow down. He simply giggles and replies, I can't slow down, it's how I drive. In the moments before the horrifying event, you can see that he is whipping down a slightly curved road. You can hear the sound of the wind vibrating his windows. For a split second, you spot a tree before the car spins out of control and flips. The most chilling part of the video for me was hearing his groans along with a man who found the crash scene. Take a listen. Yeah. Hey, guy. Hello. God damn it. Tell him to come on. He got a pull. 22-year-old Satora Baratova decided to livestream her morning commute in Kazan, Russia. She appears to be in a pretty good mood and is seen singing along to an upbeat song on the radio. At one point, she engages with her audience asking, How are you? What are you up to? Where are you going? This was a fatal error. You can see her gaze fixing on her phone for longer and longer periods. Near the end, she finally looks back up at the road. Her expression melts into one of dismay and terror. A nauseating crunch is heard at the very moment the video shakes until finally fading into black. That crunch was the sound of her car being completely crushed like an empty soda can. A huge bus T-boned her on her side of the car. The force propelled her out of her seat through the passenger side where she landed dangling and mangled out of the window. A looky-loo shot a video of the aftermath and I could only handle the censored version. She died almost immediately after impact. A lot of this live stream has thankfully been scrubbed from the net, but even if it wasn't, it sounds like it was so bad and graphic that I really wouldn't be able to show any of it. Due to how recent this was, I will only be identifying the suspect's name and photo. Last month in Louisiana, a 34-year-old woman was discovered in a car with her hands tied to the steering wheel. She was so bloodied and bruised that she was unrecognizable. Police found the woman's body thanks to a tip that came in after several people reached out to Facebook after witnessing a horrific live stream. 35-year-old Earl Lee Johnson Jr. conducted the live that showed the woman tied up as he berated and beat her. He even took time to interact with viewers, and it was obvious that the victim was being tortured. She remained somewhat responsive and moving throughout a good chunk of the 15-minute live stream, but the man appeared to only grow more enraged, according to witnesses. Eventually, in a fast fury, he began stabbing her all over while accusing her of stealing. It became obvious that viewers were witnessing a brutal murder. After the 15-minute live, he reportedly attempted to light the car on fire, but it didn't work. He took off on foot, but thankfully, it wasn't long until he was arrested and charged. On October 18, 2018, 44-year-old Brian Kirby went live on Facebook while speeding down the dark highway. With one hand on the steering wheel and the other holding his phone, he showed viewers his speedometer as he reached up to 167 miles per hour. The live went on for over seven minutes. Brian drove at erratic speeds between 110 and 167. He took time to interact with viewers and at one point said, We cruise at 140. The live came to a screeching and crunching halt when Brian saw a sedan driving in the right lane. The distraction proved to be one too many, and he crossed over the center line, violently striking it. Unfortunately, Brian was fine. He fled from the scene, but the man in the sedan died as a result of his traumatic injuries. Brian had been speeding at around 120 miles per hour when he struck him. Thanks to his live stream, Brian was apprehended fairly quickly and convicted of vehicular manslaughter. He received a 15-year sentence last year. On May 10th, 2016, 19-year-old Ocean began her very last Periscope live stream inside of her apartment. She detailed her previous relationship with her ex who she claimed terribly abused her. She goes on to tell her younger viewers to stop watching because she had something big planned. Despite making herself vulnerable and discussing a dark time in her life, some of her 1,000 viewers proceeded to bully and troll her with comments. The part that shatters my heart is the moment that her cat jumps up to her, possibly sensing that she was deeply hurt. And I wonder if the cat could even sense what she had planned to do. The live stream ends at Eagley train station just south of Paris at 4.29 p.m. Ocean is struck by a passing train, sending her underneath the megatons of metal. The very last clip is haunting in itself. It's of a first responder trying to end the live stream. This reminds the viewer how real this incident was and that a human life who was just seen alive on camera was no longer. I guess it can't be helped for the last words that this man ever said. 
This streamer, who goes by the name Ted Tzu, was known to make poor choices for the sake of more viewers, and this incident was no different. He decided to climb the 12,388-foot hostile Mount Fuji in the dead of winter without any proper gear, gloves, or sense. It is strongly encouraged to only make this climb in the summer months. Throughout the video, you hear the man talking about his fingers freezing and whether or not he will even make it all while he struggles to climb up through the hardened snow. He refuses to stop filming, even though it's making it more difficult. Just before he makes it to the summit, he says, okay, let's go, it's also dangerous here. In the next instant, he slips on the ice, loses his footing, and begins sliding down the steep, almost cliff-like mountain. He picks up more and more speed in his fall. He knew he was about to die and simply states, I guess it can't be helped, before disappearing from view. Turns out that he chose the wrong path to get to the top. Without gear and skill, he didn't stand a chance. 